Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at matching a solved scene up with a reference model. And in this particular case, we're going to be using as a reference model just a flat plane that's been textured with some imagery from Google Maps. It could just as well be a full 3D mesh model of, of an existing building or plot or whatever. But in this case, we're going to work just from the plane. That is something that people do from time to time, or you know, not only just with Google Maps sort of imagery, but also with uh, architectural plan views as well. So our shot here is a typical helicopter flyover sort of shot. And perhaps the brief is to add a new building into this parking lot here in the middle of the shot. So that would be a typical architectural sort of task. So we're going to start out with this using just the auto tracker and I'm going to fire that up and let it get a bunch of uh, trackers throughout this shot. And with this kind of helicopter shot, you're always going to need to be looking for cars and other moving vehicles in the shot. It just happens all the time. It's, it's not even really worth doing the solve first. You might as well just run the tracking part of it. And now, once you've got the trackers, then you're going to go and just scrub through it. And you can just look and see on the highways, you know, what's moving. And give it a quick delete, you know. We could set up roto masking on the highways and stuff, but really it just isn't worth the trouble. It's just a matter of taking a look and seeing what you got. Can't really tell. There's a bus over there. I don't know if it's really moving or not. Same for that train. Justice is swift. So I think we're doing well on the cars. So just for good measure, we'll take out a bunch of these very far away things as well. They aren't really going to be supplying much in the way of useful information. Hmm, there's a ship out there. It might be moving or not. Who knows? So we've done a little initial cleanup on it. Now let's go and do the solve. And once, once we've got that, we can do the cleanup trackers and take a look and see what we've got. So there's like one tracker left. I guess it's, a, it's bad in two different ways. So we'll just say sayonara to that. And now I can start refining this. And one other thing that let's do is turn on the distortion calculation. You see we're running around 0.6 there. We'll just update a little. Now we're down around 0.34. So we've taken out about a factor of two in R that was due to distortion in the lens. So that's a good thing to get rid of also. So our next step here is to, to do actually the part of matching up with the mesh and in order to do that, we're going to need to be able to identify features that we've tracked and match them to things that we see in our mesh object, which in this case is going to be the Google Maps images. So the Google Maps, you know, is going to give us the outlines of the buildings and uh, where the streets are, which aren't really things that we have necessarily great trackers on. So what we're going to do is add some supervised trackers at particular locations that we can pick up on the map. So I'm just going to drop down a couple of trackers here. And you know these are going to be things that can be found in the map. And I'll be looking later in the shot. 
you know, one of the things is you always want to be adding some trackers right around where you do the insert. So we'll look for some stuff later in that in the shot. But at this point, we're going to need to do a bit of supervised tracking. We're going to be doing that using a key now and uh, key smoothing after that. And also, we're going to just take our trackers that we add and we'll just make them all a nice blue color just to keep track of them. So at this point, I'm going to skip away and do a little supervised tracking and I will be right back. And we're back. So I just wanted to run through the settings that I used here quickly for the supervised tracking. This is just one last, last little tracker. So I've got a key being set automatically every 20 frames and having it stop every time it sets a key so that when it does that I just went and adjusted it but rather than adjusting the key position up here I was actually using the nudge keys that's the little arrows on the number pad area of the keyboard so that as I went through the shot I was just keeping those individual keys lined up in the right spots and not really worry quite so much initially about what happens in between. So now I'm just using the A and the F to scrub through the shot just on the keyframes. So then at the very end, now I'm going to go back and just play through the shot again. And now it's doing bi-directional tracking using the key smooth value that's there so that at any individual frame, it's using both the key behind it and the key in front of it to generate the particular location of the tracker. So having done that, I can then lock up the tracker. And let's just flip out to look at the overall shot. And you'll see a bunch of these blue trackers that I put out there. This is the one that's selected now. So those are the ones that I'm going to line up to my reference mesh, which as I said, it's going to be a flat plane with the Google Map image on it. So let's do that. Let's get that set up. I'm going to go over to the geometric hierarchy panel just because it's set up with the hierarchy view here, or the perspective view. And let's just spin and switch out to a different location. And I'm going to create the plane now. And just throw that out there. And we're going to set the size of it to some particular values. These are just cooked up based on the aspect ratio of the image that I grabbed, the Google image that I grabbed. So we've got that. And one thing I'll point out is that the absolute position of these guys is going to mat matter also. So you want to get them positioned in your scene. That's whatever your reference meshes are. You're going to get them positioned at the scene wherever you want things to turn out. So, you know, you might in fact have, you know, three or four different buildings and, you know, have a composite model and you put everything in the right spots in the scene. And you can use all those individual uh, meshes as the basis of your coordinate setup process that we're doing. So that is our actual plane. While we're at it, we're just going to drop the opacity down a bit. It's going to make it possible to see the seed locations that we're going to set up, even though they're actually going to be on the underside of the plane. And now let's bring in our actual imagery. So I'm just selecting the plan view and I'm going to go and hit backslash so that we get the solid display. So that's what the actual images, that actual image looks like. And let's do one other thing. I'm going to start out like I'm dragging that plane. I'm going to hold down control. And that just cloned it. So 
going to take the clone and change that to be a satellite view. So now I have both of them. And actually just by switching their visibility on and off, I can get one or the other. So I just double click that and I'll just change the names here so you can keep them straight. So let's just move back a little bit here. And now we're going to be ready to start with our next phase. We're going to get both a camera and perspective view. I'm going to roll up to the to those reference guys that we want to work on. And you'll notice that you can see the plane here. If we wanted to mess around with this, we could actually move the entire scene out of the way and leave the mesh behind, you know, without moving the mesh so that we wouldn't have to look at it. But it's not really going to make a whole heck of a lot of difference to what we're doing. So let's just start figuring out what we've got. So I've, I've selected the first of the trackers, and I am going to go out here I'm just using the middle mouse and right mouse and so on to move around in the perspective view to identify the right location. I'm going to turn on the place mode in the perspective view and that's the key thing. It, it lets you take one thing and actually put it onto a, a mesh and you can, you can try that and play with it just with, with two meshes say and see what it works you know how it works and what it does but here we're going to use it to put that tracker onto this mesh. And we're going to put it on in the particular desired location, which in this case is right around the point of that little piece of landscaping there. You see just very faintly the little marker. And what that process did was over here in, in the coordinates panel, it created seed coordinates for that tracker at those particular locations. And that's it's basically just read those values off the off the mesh. And the equivalent thing to do we could have done is gone running around with, with tape measures and surveying equipment and, and generated XYZ coordinates. And we could just type those into those coordinate number values. That would be kind of a pain in the butt. So we're we're using this reference mesh as a way to, to generate those XYZ values instead. But it's important to keep in mind that's really all we're use all we're doing with the reference mesh is using it to create those coordinates and the reference mesh doesn't enter into the process other than that and one, once we've got the XYZ set up we're, we're good so now let's just skip through I mean just use the little down down arrow button to sequence to my next tracker it's up here at the peak of the thing right pretty much on the edge of the circle there. So we'll just drop that down there on to our next. So let's see, this is sitting somewhere out here. So it's like at the end of this road, right on this corner. Now, as you can see, the accuracy of this overall process is going to be dependent on just how well we know really where we've got things. So this is the corner of the building. This is the corner of this other building. I think the Google Maps and the uh, helicopter flight were actually at somewhat different times from the looks of it. This is the corner of this building. It looks like there may already be a building in this back parking lot. So we'll drop that one there onto the next. Ah, oh, this is the one that's later in the shot. 
it's on this other building so it's right here and it's right at ground level as I mentioned it is a key point to have trackers right in the location of where you're going to do something and use those as a reference you know here we are taking a bit of a leap of faith about things really being flat and that's not necessarily justifiable and we'll see what we do with that in some cases in just a minute And this last one, this is just as another reference, and I I, I put it there because I, I think in real life you'd want to have another ground level reference in that area. We can't really tell from the overhead view where along this road that it is located, so we can't really use it directly, but we'll get a set of coordinates for it that you could use to place the model in the, in the height direction. So now we've got our points all laid out. We can go over to the coordinates view and look at the constrained points. And you see we've got you know, values for the, those bunch of trackers set up now. So we're ready to start with an initial solve of this. And so far, if we go back to the coordinates, you notice they're really very large errors. So what we did was try and reposition the scene to achieve those coordinates. But in fact, some of them are off by really a lot because they're not at the right height. And we're not, we're not aggressively using the coordinates. We're not forcing it to use them. And, and, and it's a good thing because they're actually, they're actually not the right ones. So what we need to do is, is take a look at these individual points and go back and say, well, this one, you know, it, it's not really, it's not on the ground. It's not at the z equals zero coordinate that uh, we read off the model um, off the plane. So we want to make that be on any z axis. So it's basically any z axis that passes through those x and y values. And you see over here in the constraint points view, you know, it's, it's saying that the x coordinate has to be a specific value, the y coordinate has to be a value, but the z value is no longer being constrained. So the same thing is going to be true of this other one that's sitting on the building. And we've got this other building one there. So let's see what's left. That should be ground level, ground level, ground level, building building, ground level, that's the one that's back there, and again another up in the air building. So again we can run a solve if we're so inclined that this one again is still just a positioning so let's see what this one here, maybe we didn't really get too too good. Certainly a lot of error on that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, here's the tracker there. Here's the the seed point there. So it looks like I'm flat out on the wrong road. Yeah, this the spot that I put it is actually next to this triangular building, whereas the uh, the tracker is being solved over there. So that was just, just a botch. We've still got the place mode going. So let's just move it up to that spot there. And now we'll rerun. And you can see that that's, that's improved the situation pretty dramatically. 
So to go and actually use these coordinates more aggressively, you know, like I said, this is currently we just started out using those coordinates to align the scene. It didn't affect the solve, it just helped reposition it. But we can actually drive these coordinates more aggressively into the solve. And here now you see that the errors are very, very low because it's being told, you know, really you need to stick with these particular values. So if we go and, and take a look, you know, now we've got our scene there. Let's uh, see what we can do with this. We just need to adjust the actually the world. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, I meant to do this earlier. Need to make that world size value larger. That just uh, is kind of it's like under the dome. Everything lives inside the dome, including the camera, the trackers. That just gives the software a bit of an idea how big things are and it uses it to set some of the clipping plane distances and the sizes of the trackers and so on. It doesn't actually really affect the solve per se. But now you've got basically your, your shot and the reference image, the reference model being lined up. Let's see what I want to do. Let's take the uh, So that's kind of your, <laughs> your rough approximation as to what's going on there. Okay, so that's the uh, general idea here. Hopefully you got some idea. Here we, we're just using this, this flat plane and, and images pulled off of Google to use as a, a reference. You can also do the, exactly the same process, basically, with a model that you imported of your favorite new building or city of New York City or whatever. The key point is that you're using that place mode to put the tracker coordinates, to generate the XYZ tracker coordinates here. And once you've done that, you're using those in the solving process to control where the whole scene is aligned to match up with your model. So hopefully that uh, gives you an idea how this all works and you're able to put that to work. Thanks for watching.